So I initially thought about going with uh, the theme of how to turn over completed tracks overnight, <laughs> since that's what I'm involved with right now. But because I can't, uh, because I'm a little limited in what I can play from this session, I decided to go uh, with an element that uh, I use a lot, I really love, and it, it's a cool thing to kind of explore, which is uh, double-tracked guitars of various sorts. Why it's so cool is, uh, typically I'll just walk you through the mechanics of it. Um, a lot of modern songs use uh, double tracking of guitars. So you play a single part, then you double that part, and you pan one part left and one part right. And what happens is you get a really huge uh, guitar sound, clean or dirty. Um, and it really benefits a lot of of compositions that way. Typically I don't triple track guitars because I feel like that just rubs off too many frequencies. Um, I will triple track vocals. I love that sound. That's a, uh, a tip I picked up from uh, Jason Sheff, formerly of Chicago. It's a fantastic sound and I love it. But uh, triple tracking uh, guitars is not my, my favorite thing to do. So. Um, why it works so well is you just create kind of a big spacious sound. Now, can you copy and paste just one recorded track and pan it uh, left and right? Yeah, but you have to do that carefully. If you have exact duplicates in exact uh, time, if, unless you offset the timing a little bit by bumping the track a little bit or creating a delay or something in there, you're not going to get the effect of a left and right pan. You're going to get kind of a centered uh, track which defeats the purpose of double tracking. Uh, you still hear people cutting and pasting and uh, getting just exact duplicates in uh, current music. It's kind of a trend right now. I don't really like it. If I can play something twice and get a cool sound, I will do that because I don't like exact duplicates of stuff. To me it kind of sterilizes the music. I will go ahead and neuter a track for a client if that's what they really want, and it happens. Um, but I don't personally prefer it, so it is a way you can go. Acoustic guitars, it can work as well. Um, it just depends on the track. I won't always double track acoustic guitars. Sometimes I'll do four tracks of acoustics, depending on what we need. So uh, I played a kind of a clean uh, sound, or a you know, mildly crunchy sound. Let's uh, listen to kind of a heavier sound, and you can hear First the single track and then the double track come in and, and the kind of effect that creates. So there it is. I, I love double tracking stuff. I love the process of it. I love hearing it back and and maybe fine-tuning stuff. I just, I just love it. Um, it's, I'm not the first guy to ever do it by any stretch. <laughs> it's been going on since the 70s. Uh, some guys who can get away with uh, single track, Eddie Van Halen, uh, when he started, did initially a single track guitar, which sounded huge, and then over time went to the double tracking um, and still sounded phenomenal. Randy Rhodes, who was con his contemporary, really started with double tracking guitars on those Ozzy albums and actually triple tracking his solos which I don't feel was the best way to go. I feel like that triple tracking of the solos just rubbed off too many high-end frequencies but you know it's Randy Rose. <laughs> so anyway that is uh, my trick of the day. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun to do for guitarists out there and uh, when you listen to music if you're listening on a pretty good stereo system and you hear guitar left right you can almost be sure that uh, that that's what happened there was uh, some guy sat there and he, he duplicated his part to create a nice big spacious sound so thanks for checking it out I will see you for the next installment of the 100 day project which comes tomorrow thanks for tuning in farewell friends <laughs>